I have an e-bike and I love it. I live full-time in my RV and I don't have a tow car. I wasn't able to get around until I got an e-bike and it completely changed how I enjoy the areas that I go to. But my e-bike wasn't really the best e-bike for me because it was too big. And so today I'm going to start a new series for you guys called the Short and sweet of e-bikes and there's going to be four episodes so if you're not already a subscriber please do so and then ring the little bell after you subscribe so you get notified of new videos i'm going to tell you guys this is not a tech wonk video i don't really know a lot about bikes i just know that i needed one i wanted one i got one and i love it and i'm calling it the short and sweet because i'm short and this is going to be sweet so i'm five four and a half the first bike I'm gonna show you today was the Rad Power Bike, and frankly, it was too big for me, but I inherited it from somebody. I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. But just know, later on today, I've got video two coming out, which is on the Crusher Lank Elise. Right now, I'm gonna tell you guys about bike number one, which is on the Rad Rover. Uh, first of all, I have to give a shout out to my friend Bob Wells at Cheap RV Living because he gave me this bike. I met Bob, as you guys might know, a couple of years ago before I had a YouTube channel, and he had this bike, and he wasn't using it. He thought he would want a bike, but he found out that he was hauling it around and wasn't using it. But I had an RV when he had a van, and I didn't have a bike or anything to get into town. If I needed to get food or do laundry, I would have to pack up camp to go in. And so he gave me the bike. And again, if you don't know Bob Wells, here's a picture of the two of us at the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous last January where I spoke. That's his event, so check that out. You know, Bob's been a lot to a lot of us out there. So if you don't know him, do check out his channel. And thanks again, Bob. Now I'm gonna go back in a time machine so that I can show you guys footage from when I first got the bike from the Toronto Pinnacles and I'm gonna tell you all about the bike and what I liked about it. Now, first of all, I'm in the Toronto Pinnacles. So look behind me, this is a great place. It's a great place to ride a bike. I have not been on a bike since I was 12 and believe me, if anybody can ride this, I can if anybody can. And the tires you're gonna see are really thick and sturdy. He got the big fat tires put on it. There's a lot of gravel and sand here and this bike just handled it like a dream. I go in and out of these trails and see this beautiful scenery, no problem. And I'll tell you, um, I've been here a week. I've put about 30 miles on the bike just here at the Toronto Pinnacles in a week and it feels like nothing. I've seen parts of this amazing place that I wouldn't have seen had I been walking because I wouldn't have walked 30 miles um, and then back to my RV. But on the bike, it's like nothing. And another cool thing about the Rad Power Bike is that it can be like a regular bike and not help you at all or it can help you in increments as much as you need it to to get up hills or something like that or if you just want to coast. So the bike is heavy. It's about 60 or 70 pounds with this battery on it. And it would be hard for me to pedal this up a hill without the help of the motor. Um, so that's really great. I you know, don't have to struggle to get up the hills. I can set it at zero, so it's not helping me at all other times. It feels like a really sturdy bike to me. There are a couple things that I really like about this bike that I want to tell you about. First of all, this is the uh, battery. Bob had two of these charged for me when I took it, and I've had it for over a month. I use it all the time, and this first battery has gone down only 25%. In the 30 miles that I've ridden here um, at the Toronto Pinnacles, I mean, it barely touched the battery, so they last a really long time. Plus, this battery comes off right here. So, you can make it less desirable of a thing to steal by just putting a key in right here and removing this battery and putting it inside with you. Another thing is the control panel is really easy to use and the buttons are really easy to hit while you're in motion. I thought that this would be kind of like a Vespa or a scooter where, you know, it would just take off and, and I wouldn't be able to control how it starts or stops as much as this actually does. So here's what I've learned about the Rad Power Bike. You have to start pedaling 
for the battery to actually kick in. So that can be kind of tough if, you know, I'm going up a really steep sudden hill or something because I have to get it to go up a couple feet before the battery kicks in. Um, but then it does and you can put it on zero, which means no help at all, all the way up to five. It'll go 20 miles an hour. So here's another thing I love about the Rad Power Bike. You can see I'm in a really sandy area and everything is covered with dust. Well, the battery is down here. I just switched out the battery for the very first time. So if I turn this on right here, and then I hit mode, you're gonna see it light up over here, if you can see it through the sand. And I have a full battery right here, but this is my second battery. On the first one, I went, I don't know, 40 or 50 miles without having to charge it. Now, I don't have it help me that much, but that is very cool. And the other one is just charging over here. Um, I have a lithium power bank and it's just plugged in charging. So that one will be ready to go when I come back. The battery weighs, I think, eight pounds. And then mine had fenders, which Bob got, and a couple of saddlebags and a rack. And I'll tell you, I think all in it was almost 80 pounds. So it was great once it was going, but I really had to work to get it to start pedaling sometimes. And it was kind of a nightmare to get up and down off the hitch. I made the mistake of doing this first. And it came right out of the Velcro. Now Bob told me even he had to do it one wheel at a time. So he would take one wheel up and then the other one. And I'll tell you, I started out with a hitch like the one I have now. I went to a second hitch that had a ramp, thinking it would be better. It was not better, and it was not RV rated, so it ended up being not safe. So I went back to the Hollywood Rack, which is really the only RV rated bike, if you have an RV, um, that you can put on your hitch. If you don't do that, the weight can be off, and it can be dangerous. So I'm gonna put a link below for the Hollywood Rack that these bikes go on. It does run about $430 on their website, but it's about 50 bucks less on Amazon. So that's the link that I'll put down there. And it's good for any of these bikes. But the next two in the series, of course, you can fold up. So look out for those. So the Rad is great, but the frame only comes in one size. I've had a lot of people ask me if they thought they could sit on it or their wife could sit on it while I'm traveling because they don't know if they can get on it. And frankly, it's too big. Um, when I sit on it, my tippy toes reach the ground if the seat is at the lowest position. So if you're around 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, like me, the rad might be too tall and it might be too heavy for you. But I'll tell you, Doug is taking it now, my boyfriend, and he loves it, it's great for him. It's not too heavy for him and it's just the right size, he's 5'10". In about four days, I'm going to have out all four videos in the series, including the comparison, where you can see the seat size, the frame size, the tires, the displays, and everything next to each other. So please do come back and check that out. Now, coming up right after this, released at the same time, is episode two, which is on the Crusher Link Elise, which is still a fat tire mountain bike, but it's foldable, so come back and see that one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do share it with your friends, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you're all doing great out there. This is Robin, and everybody have happy travels and be free.